first Detroit drive started at their 29. They were helped along the way with a penalty, but then missed the 49-yard field goal and still trail. We, we get the word about Ken Anderson, who has given way to Turk Schoener here. But Anderson was dinged only, and he could come back. And that's good news for Cincinnati. Schoener's going to throw. A first down run by the quarterback. He almost came up here into the booth. And Jimmy Williams, who was pushing on the play, should have made the tackle. Left his feet, tried to tackle him high. He went right underneath. Watch, watch 59 on the left side of your picture here. Watch him. He's coming in. He got a free shot. He should have hit him right in the back. Look at that. He tries to tackle him high and misses. And uh, for that reason, Turk Schoenert was able to run up the field. And uh, I mentioned earlier, he does a good job and averages four points per run. He got 12 yards that time in the first down. The Cincinnati 42. 5 left in the half. Alexander was hit first by Van Fantetti. A flag is down on the other side of the field. Harry Cobb finished off the play, number 53. That was kind of a wasted play on the part of Cincinnati, uh, Jack, because the defense was overloaded to the offensive right and uh, had one too many guys over there and shouldn't shouldn't have been able to run that play. They didn't. There's a penalty on the play along with it. Looks like the Lions are going to take the five yards. Jim Tenney, the referee, the umpire, John Lineback, head linesman, Sid Illegal Seaman. formation, six men on the line of scrimmage. Five yards is declined. Second down. So they turn it down. Second down and nine coming up. Exactly five minutes left in the half. Schoener, 6'1", 190 out of Stanford. Having a good year as a backup quarterback. Incomplete. Almost a very good catch by Curtis down around his ankles. Third and nine. Lions can't afford to get any further behind, can they? No, they can't. Although, you know, when you look at it realistically, when you say 14 points, it, it sounds like a lot of plays, a lot of points, but really it's just two plays away from being back in the game. Here's the score of another game for you. Look what Houston is doing to Cleveland in the second quarter, 24 to 6. 93-yard kickoff return by Steve Brown for Houston. And Seattle leads the Giants 14-6. First contact. Fanning may have been drawn offside. We'll check and see. Encroachment 74. Five yards. Against Detroit, that will make it third down and four. Mike Fanning is 6'6", 270. Played his collegiate football at Notre Dame was traded from the Los Angeles Rams to the Lions. I used to have a football camp at Cutcher's Country Club in New York when he was just a little kid in Oklahoma, and he was at our camp, and he was an excellent prospect even at that young age, Mike Fanning. Well, Cincinnati is out of the playoffs. There you see the penalties thus far in this game, and Detroit has to win either this one or their game next week against Tampa Bay in Pontiac in order to win the division crown. Not having a very good afternoon here. Third down coming up, third and three. No pressure now. There's pressure, and it is incomplete. This was Verser reaching low to try to get it. Couldn't get it. And the Bengals will punt. So Detroit will have another time, and another chance, an ample time, 448 left in the half. Alvin Hall was defending on the play. That kind of a play, Jack, if you're not careful as a receiver, you bend your trunk, but you don't bend your knees. Had he bent his knees, he could have gotten down low enough to make that catch. Talking about David Bursher, who was 6'1", 200, played his collegiate football at Missouri. Here is the second kick by McAnally, and Robbie Martin waits back at his 15. And they block it. And Detroit has it. Well, there's the sort of play that could give them a big lift. Has the play been whistled dead yet or not? 
Coming away with the ball was Rick Rosano. Not Rosano, James Harrell. Harrell has the ball. And and the block was made by McCall, the tight end. That's the kind of player that give him a big lift at the Bengal 41, Hank. Yeah, you have to make something happen from a specialty team standpoint of your defense. Here's the shot. Now watch McNabb, watch him. He's got to catch the ball against his body, which takes a lot of time. And then the reset and try to reload and try to kick the ball takes an awful lot of time. It was a leak right inside, as you can see. And uh, Reese McCall, number 81, who was the guy who blocked the kick. And Harrell got it. That's the first one blocked against McAnally. All year long, the ball is at the 41. Shots are shot. Treads are thin. Muffler's gone. Well, come on in. There's more for your life and fears. Where else could you change a tire? That's what happened to the Lions. They punted, fumbled, punted, had one picked off, and missed the field goal. They're at the Bengal 39. See if they throw here in first and 10. Yep, there they go. Hmm. Hippel was again a little bit off target as he tried to get the ball to Mark Nichols, covered by Lewis Breeden. Threw it just a little bit behind that time. Play action, faking inside, and then stepping up and throwing the ball. Eric Hippel is 4 of 13. That's not good. Nope. 41 yards and one interception. But I tell you, the one thing about a good quarterback like Hippel, he won't stay cold very long. He, he might for a quarter or two, but he won't for four quarters. He shouldn't anyhow. Sims got down to the 36. Third and seven coming up. Guy Frazier tackled at number 49 along with Bobby Kemp. As I mentioned earlier, a quarterback on this kind of a day, especially one who doesn't throw outside that much, you have to give him enough room to step and throw and follow through because it's very important in this kind of turf that you get a good base. Third down and seven. And he hasn't had that kind of a base consistently all afternoon. James Jones is in the backfield for the Lions. They haven't thrown to him yet. Six defensive backs for the home team. They got a one-on-one -on, -one on this right side. Right. There it is. Incomplete. The ball went through the hands of the receiver, Scott. Fourth down, and Hippo ends up back at the 45. He was decked by that blitzer. They had what they wanted, a one-for-one -one situation. In the shotgun, watch it. He goes back, drops back. Uh, Safety at uh, the cornerback, Breeden blitzing on the play, number 34. Had a good chance to make the reception, but just dropped the football again in heavy traffic. I wouldn't be surprised to see Detroit try something. There's Simmons, the safety man. I wouldn't be surprised to see him throw out of punt formation. We have 346 left in the half. And now the whistle and a flag, delay of game. at the 36 it'll be at the 41 or there may have been a timeout correction i think it was detroit a timeout timeout before the delay timeout detroit okay detroit has called timeout with 346 left in the half and they avoided the penalty as a result and it gives them a chance to talk things over you expect any trickery from them i think there's a possibility the field position is such where wouldn't hurt him too much. It wouldn't would hurt him too much. No, it really wouldn't. I think they have to do something to get back in this game and make something happen. Or Monty Clark in his sixth year. Well, this Saturday, CBS Sports will bring you another special edition of the National Football League. The Washington Redskins, who will have to continue to win, particularly if they win today, will host the Giants in their final for the postseason play. And it starts at 12 noon Eastern time. So the Giants against the Redskins, that's next Saturday on CBS. This afternoon and right after this game, the Redskins have traveled to Dallas. They'll play the Cowboys. Who do you like, Hank? I like Dallas uh, only because we've seen Washington play so many times. I like them very much, but I think
synthetic turf and 20 door set could be the difference in their game later this afternoon. Yeah, the Redskins have told us they they like the grass. They don't they don't like the artificial surface. Aaron Black he is punting for the third time. You know, Black the first 10 weeks of the season of 47 punts averaged at 43.3. Now, in the last four weeks, he had, he's averaged only 33.6. Cincinnati does not have a safety man back there as such. They're not going to allow Detroit to fool them in any way with 346 left. And now, here comes Murray, and he's going to try a field goal. A long one. 36-46. This will be his longest of the year. It will be 54 yards. He and hit the upright a while back from 49 yards. As I mentioned to you, he's two for two for 50 plus. And see if he does try to kick it. There he is. A long, long one of 54 yards by Murray. And the Lions are on the board with 340 left in the half. An hour from now, there'll be 50,000 fans here, eating, drinking, cheering. Kick 54 yards, and it ties the Detroit Lion record. An amazing thing about it is he three for three from 50 plus. Isn't that something? And he hit the upright earlier, and not to only a couple of minutes ago, from 49 yards away. And he had to be very accurate to do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Murray will kick it off. Back deep for Cincinnati. We have twin safeties, and they're guarding against the onside kick. The twin safeties are John Simmons and Rodney Tate. Tate is closest to us on the screen. 340 left in the half, 14 to 3, the Bengals lead. Yeah, and I never say uh, the word Detroit when I don't think of my old high school coach, Chuck Bear, who lives in Detroit and did such a great job uh, in Gary, Indiana, and also the University of Detroit. Super coach. Tate back from the goal line he makes a bum decision that wasn't very smart but the way he was back pedaling and the coverage was already there and the tackle was made by Roosevelt Barnes next week CBS Sports brings you the final week of regular action Tampa Bay Buccaneers go to the Silver Dome in Pontiac for the game against the Lions and if the Lions lose here they'll have to win that one and there's another Central Division rivalry the Packers visit the Bears and the Bears are winning today, as we saw. Those of you in Columbus will see the Rams and Eric Dickerson in their battle at New Orleans. It starts at 12.30 Eastern time with the NFL today. Let's see where the approach of the Bengals is with three and a half remaining in the half. And the ball at their nine. Two tight ends, Holman and Ross. and just keeps those legs churning. 270 pounder finally finished off by Mike Fanning. And he got four yards. A couple of scores of other games for you. Buffalo by one point over the 49ers in the second quarter. And Seattle handily now in the second quarter against the Giants. That game is in New York. Actually in the Meadowlands. Four yards for Pete Johnson. If I were Cincinnati, I would let that clock run down to about five seconds. Take as much time as I possibly could. That's what they did. They snapped it at five. Out to Alexander. And he is close to a first down. We'll check it out. It apparently short by about a half a yard as McNaughton ran him out with the help of Williams. Sideline markers all the way across the field. Let's see, did he get a first down or not? Schoner with a very safe pass, swinging that back out. Yeah, it's a good high percentage kind of a pass. You can throw it out to the back, and he's uh, got a one-on-one -on -one situation with a linebacker. No telling how fast or how far he'll run. In the Cincinnati 18, two tight ends. They're without ML Harris in the Cincinnati lineup today. Johnson was taken down. Let's see. Did he make it? I don't think so. Looks like his feet went out from under him for one of the few times. Fourth down. No gain on that one. And it is fourth down, and the Bengals will have to punt. Fantetti had very good penetration along with Todd. Now 
Now the two minute warning will be coming up before anything else happens. And the Lions have two timeouts and the Bengals three. They don't want to use one of their timeouts here so they'll let it wind down to two minutes and then send Robbie Martin back to get the punt. So the score is 14 to three. Hey, they didn't. They forgot to stop the clock. But they'll put it back to the two minute mark. They'll put it back to the two minute mark and then McAnally will punt the ball to Martin. Hi, I'm Drew Pearson. These parents have just signed a contract for life with their teenagers. The teens agree that if they're ever faced with a drinking and driving situation, They'll call home and their parents will come get them or make other safe arrangements. And the parents have agreed that they won't try to drive when impaired by alcohol or ride with another driver who is. The idea came from a group called SAD, Students Against Driving Drunk. High school kids tired of watching their friends get hurt by drinking and driving. Make an agreement with your family. Don't let one mistake lead to another. Send for this free contract for life. Write to SAD Contract, Corbin Plaza, Marlboro, Massachusetts, 01752. That sad contract, Corbin Plaza, Marlboro, Massachusetts, 01752. This is one contract that really is good for life. The preceding message was brought to you by the National Football League. Well, McAnally has had one punt blocked. Sometimes the kicker gets a little yippy when that happens to him. Yeah, he starts to count and look up front to make sure everything's faded, and he forgets the most important thing, and that is to first catch the ball and then kick it. The one thing you can't do is let the ball come against your body because it takes so much time to take it back out where you have to kick it, and a lot of times that can make the difference. What a high snap. Oh, what a good kick. What a beautiful punt. Martin... Fumbles it and falls on it smartly. That was a smart thing to do once he dropped it. Back at the 35-yard line. Let's see what Brent Musburger has up his sleeve. A 48-yard kick. Jack, the Bears have just struck again against the Vikings. Third and three. Play fake Suey. McMahon throws to the tight end, Emery Moorhead. 16-6. They miss the extra point. They lead by 10. Back to Jack. Both of those teams, the Bears and the Vikings, are still in the hunt. Looks like we're going to go down to next week in a lot of these divisions. It certainly looks that way. It sure does. Meanwhile, the Lions are at their 35-yard line with 148 remaining in the half. They trail 14 to 3, and they have two timeouts left. Oh, bad snap. Cincinnati has. See, that's the mistake you make if you just don't fall on the ball, Jack. And the Edwards got it. Don't try to pick it up. Be satisfied to maintain possession of the ball. Fall on it. You still got the possession of the ball. You try to do that, you lose it. Now that there is a good chance that they will come up with another seven or three points. That's the third Lion turnover. Steve Mott snapped the ball too high. It's he almost had a signal for a fair catch on that one, Jack. It was that high. And now Hipple should have fallen on it right there. He picked it up, tried to run, and Edwards got it at the 17-yard line, their third turnover. Schoenert, the quarterback. Beat Johnson. Johnson went to the 15. The Bengals have three timeouts left. 1.34 left. And they let the clock run down. The tackle by Fantetti and Graham. And the Lions could be in bad shape here at the intermission. Clock running down. 1.15. Second down and eight. Alexander. Fantetti slowed him down. And he's knocked down at the 14. It'll be third and seven. McNorton finished it off. Yeah, he came up there very good from his corner position, made the stop. And again, they ran away from the overshifted defense. The Detroit Lions were overshifted to their left. And uh, the Cincinnati Bengals 
did a good job of running away from the overload. Uh, even at that, they didn't make as much yardage as I thought they might. Bruce McNaught, number 29, making the play. This time out, charge to the Bengals. Each team has two left. Coming up at halftime, a preview of the Washington-Dallas game, which will follow right on the heels of this one. Brent Nerv will have scores and highlights, and as we have demonstrated to you in the first half, there are plenty of those. And some interesting results. We have a couple of scores that we'll give you before Brent and Irv do the job for you. Seattle at the halftime leads by 11 over the Giants and in the second quarter Cleveland coming back but still trailing by 11 24 13 in their game being played at Houston. There's our time left. 105 here in the half. If to admire these Bengals they're playing tough even though they're out of it. Well you know talking to Forrest Greg yesterday that's all he talked about he said we've had a disappointing season but I guarantee you, we're not going to be looking at young people we're not worried about next year we're just worried about one thing winning the game tomorrow and then after that winning the next one we want to win and they're playing like that this afternoon their next game will be at Minnesota on Saturday and the Bengals if they win here today will be trying for the 500 part that's important any sports team Versa goes to the right Kreider to the left along with Curtis with a flag down, throwing, end zone, incomplete. Try to get it to Kreider, let's check the flag. It was third and seven. Maurice Harvey, the extra back for the Lions, was covering. And a penalty. Well, what do you do? Do you turn it down and make him kick the field goal? Probably, right? Yep, I would think so. Be satisfied to come, out of, come, come away with just three instead of the possibility of six. Dave Remington that time, you know, the offensive center has really done a remarkable job as a rookie from Nebraska, 6'3", 288, number one draft choice this Illegal year. Illegal motion, 89, decline, fourth down. The call against Dan Ross, the tight end, penalty declined, fourth down. And of course, Greg said yesterday about Remington, you know, now we've got him, we can run inside, we can run off tackle, we can run outside because he's really a snoot bull in the middle area. Really a great play. Breach is 15 out of 18, and inside the 40, he's perfect. This will be a 32-yard try. Kreider holding the ball. That's blocked. So the Lions have blocked a punt, and now a field goal. And a loose ball. Who's got it? I think the fellow who got it came back in from out of bounds, and you can't do that. No, you can't. Cincinnati I, has in it. most cases, the biggest guy in the bottom of that pile winds up with a football. It was Mike Cooper, we think, who got in and knocked the ball down. 42 seconds left in the half. Someone with their right arm. Boy, he got, there was good timing on the play. A good block got him hit. Dropped the, the knocked the ball down with his right arm. Can't tell who it was, but it was a good surge. Now watch this man that falls on. Well, it's going to belong to Detroit, no matter. So it was blocked, and the Lions dodge the bullet and avoid three points. 42 seconds left in the half. Let's see if they try to strike deep. Maybe it was McCall who blocked his second kick of the day. We really didn't have a good enough picture. Nor did we see it at the outset when we watched it live. You got to be careful here. You don't make them another mistake and give them possession for another opportunity. That ball was thrown away for the most part. Yes, it was, and very wisely so. Griffin was covering. Sims, the intended receiver, 35 seconds left in the half. But as I mentioned, Jack, you've got to be very careful with 35 seconds that you don't make some kind of a mistake offensively and give them another opportunity to get a good field position and have an opportunity to strike again before the half. 14 to 3 the score. Bengals lead. And play is short of a first down as Chadwick caught it at the 30. Tackled by Ray Griffin. The Bengals are without Archie Griffin, without M.L. Harris, and Chris Collinsworth hasn't played today. Timeout called by the Lions with 20 seconds left in the half. 
it blew a few seconds there uh, trying to make a decision to make the call the timeout call Jack next Saturday immediately following that giant redskin game we told you about on CBS Sports we'll have collegiate basketball Louisville against the defending national champs North Carolina State they're seven and one off to a very good start Jim Valpano the coach and he has some of last year's heroes back including Lorenzo Charles and Kozel McQueen and a newcomer Spud Webb they say he's something to watch join Gary Bender and Billy Packer for the action 345 Eastern time that's Saturday following the giant Redskin game timeout slot Detroit one Bengals two 20 seconds on the clock turnovers is, have hurt Detroit they've turned it over three times and they've led to a couple of Cincinnati touchdowns the rain has all but stopped here but the field will be wet for the rest of the day we get a good look at number 70 Keith Dorney what a good one he is yeah he really is a great offensive tackle he's big and he's strong and he gets the job done a good run blocker and a good pass blocker 6'5", 265, number one draft court from Penn State. Third and two. Pippa likes to run. He wants to get out of bounds. He already has the first down. 12 seconds left in the half. First down run by Hipple. 12 seconds remaining. Thank you, right. You put your finger on it early. We've seen Detroit frequently in recent days. Thanksgiving, the Monday night game, and other games. They're not playing with the uh, the same vitality today that they played previously. Maybe that home crowd helps them that much. It really does. They look like a totally different team at home than they do away from home in this particular game. Ball is at the Lion 42. First out. Three wide receivers to the right side. Nichols, Scott, Chadwick. Only a three-man rush. That's a jump ball, isn't it? Anybody have it? Yeah, Detroit. Yeah, Detroit has it. Inside the 20. And a first down with three seconds left. Well, they could get a field goal out of it. If Chadwick caught it. How'd he do it? With his hands, Jack. With his hands. But he made, he made a great catch. He really made a great catch. I don't think it was Chadwick. I couldn't tell. Yeah, maybe. I think it was. Was yeah. it? Yeah, Chadwick caught it at the 19. He threw it up there, and that's what happens when you take a chance. You know, you throw it up there. That's a big pin, big bend play. Look at that. Three defensive players around the ball, and in spite of that, he was able to leap up on top and make the catch. Who Sensational. Was? Who caught it? I still can't see who got it. Don't see the number. Well, don't you believe me? Uh, not until I see the number. <laughs> Chadwick caught it at the 19, <laughs> and Murray, who is one for two today, will try a 37-yard field goal. He hit from 54 yards. High snap. Hipple got it down. Murray gives the Lions. Well, that was a, a miraculous three points that they got, all things considered. Makes the score 14 to 6 at the half. So, Chadwick set it up, and Murray took advantage of it. A 37 yard boot. You know, that's the nice thing about Chadwick. He's 6'3, 185. Leaping up with those small defensive backs, he was able to make the catch. Was he the one? Yes, he was. Sleep, <laughs> but they're still only two plays out of coming back and taking control of this game. So they got anything little, can happen. They got a little lift by the extra three points they got toward the uh, tail end of the half. And I think they have to come back in the second half and play with a lot more animation, a lot more enthusiasm. They got to make something happen, and they're capable of doing that. They've blocked two kicks here today, and that's made a difference. We mentioned again Chicago over Minnesota, 16-13 third quarter. And here is Ed Murray to kick it off. He's given this club a lift. A lift. And back is uh, Simmons, along with Ray Horton. The ball blew off the kicking tee. The rain has not stopped completely. It has abated quite a bit. Simmons is at the top of your screen, and Horton is closest to you. This will be returned by Horton from the five-yard line. Couldn't stand that, could they? James Harrell made the tackle. 
Memphis at the Detroit 45. From the five to the Detroit 45, a 50-yard return. That's the one thing you don't want to have happen if you were Detroit. Uh, they did not cover the kick very well at all, which is obvious. There was a lane. He took advantage of it. Boy, he really scooted through there in great shape. Horton's only a rookie. Yeah, he's from Washington, 5'10", 189. Has five interceptions. So Schonert is the quarterback. And this is Stanley Wilson, whom we're seeing for the first time. Gary Cobb made the tackle. Number 32 is Wilson. He's been out with an injury. This fellow is going to be a good back someday. Yeah, he's 5'10", 210. A rookie from Oklahoma. Has carried the ball 51 times for 252 yards and a 4.9 average. He makes it happen. Drafted ninth in 1983. He just got two yards. Wilson on a wing. And look at Johnson. Very close to a first down near the Detroit 35-yard line. And in fact, it is a first down as they mark the ball. Curtis Green, the tackler. Well, the Bengals are doing a good job of knocking people off the line of scrimmage. Remington that time. Yes, he did, made a very good block. Dave Remington, Max Montoya, Mike Wilson. Boy, they're making things happen up front. Lions have to stop this drive. They're trailing 14 to 6. Shown it in place of Anderson, who was dinged in the first half, but is capable of coming back if need be. break for Detroit. Fantetti pulled the ball in. He had it for a moment. Whether he came away with it or not, I don't know. Somebody else is on the bottom. And the Bengals say they have it back. Yep, looks like they have it back. Detroit had it for a moment, but it got away on that wet turf. And it'll be second down. Lapham recovered his second fumble of the day, number 62. We have four scores of other games, four scores and several, several years ago. New Orleans leading the Eagles in the fourth quarter, 14 to three. Chicago in the third quarter by three over Minnesota. Buffalo by three, uh, trailing by three as the 49ers play at Buffalo and Houston still has the lead over Cleveland. Second and 11. That ball was caught by Dan the tight end at the 12 yard line. You talk about great anticipation that time. Uh, Turk Schoener really did a good job of anticipating throwing the ball to the tight end right in the zone. Watch him. He releases the ball right up on top in good shape. Look at this. He takes a five step drop and drops it right over the top of the linebacker. Look at that. And Ross makes an excellent leaping catch. Try to get some help from Hall from the backside, number 35, but couldn't jar it loose. He got up over the top of Hall to make the catch at the 12. Stanley Wilson. And a very good play by the cornerback, Watkins, number 27. They tell us that Watkins is the best in that defensive backfield of the Lions, and he made a dandy tackle that time. Yes, he did, and he comes in with four interceptions, and Bruce McNorton with six. Two corners are doing an excellent job. Shoner looking to the sideline to get the next play. And Monty Clark said that Mel Phillips has really done a super job with these young defensive backs. That's what Shoner has done since taking over for Anderson. The ball is at the 10, second and eight. Lions made something that time with Van Teddy blitzing and not missing back at the 20-yard line. The timing of the blitz was perfect by Fantetti that time. Watch him come through. Here's an end zone shot. Watch 57 come through. Takes a course on the outside of Lapham. Nobody touches him. He keep, keeps both feet on the ground. Good tackling position and makes the sack. Ken Fantetti, number 57. Third and 17 at the 19. Third down. The defensive back, Maurice Harvey. They haven't run many draws at all as much as they're here. They go outside again. 
Johnson ran to the 10. And that'll make it fourth down and eight and bring the field goal team on. I would surmise Harvey ran him out of bounds, number 23. Johnson to the Lion 10. Well, they blocked two kicks today. One punt, one field goal. And they'll be coming after this one. Breach will attempt it. He's 15 out of 19 on the year. Johnson has rushed for 62 yards on 17 carries. Reese McCall has been doing most of the damage on the block kicks. 28-yard try. Kreider holding the ball. That is good. We have 11 minutes left in the third quarter. 17 to 6. I slipped. I'm sorry. I was late. Sack. Maybe we should change the move. The best never comes easy. We need this one. That's why there's nothing else like it. Budweiser Light. Gotta bring out your best. Bring out your best. Budweiser Light. Bring out your best. Budweiser Light. Bring out your best. Budweiser Light. Bring out your best. The best. It has a taste all its own. Enjoy it. It's an adventure to the top of the world. Rod Steiger and Richard Chamberlain star in Cook and Peary, The Race to the Pole. From left to right, Monty Clark, Ted Marchabrota, number 16, Gary Danielson, wondering if he's going to come in. Hipple is 7 out of 18. And we'll see if the Lions make a change. Well, that 50 yard kickoff return led to three points. Here's a split kick taken by one of the up men, and across to the 35 yard line for the Lions goes Larry Lee, the guard. And it is Gary Danielson at quarterback. Well, what do you think of that, Mr. Stram? I think you have to do something to get your your ball your football team back in in sync and this might get it done you got to make a change when one is cold you got to make a change and they're doing it Danielson there you see 53 percent six touchdowns four intercepted he's been sacked six times As Billy Sims tosses to Bill a one yard that's all good tackle by Reggie Williams number 57 he maintained good outside leverage, talking about Reggie Williams, a right linebacker. He was not able to, they could not hook him, and he was right there to make the play. Cincinnati, number one in the NFL, total defense, and number one against the rush. There is nothing wrong with Hippo, it's just Monty Clark trying to get a little change up, a change of pace, find a hot quarterback. First throw by Danielson. Sack for a big loss by Jim LeClaire, number 55. Another blitz. Jim LeClaire, number 55, the left linebacker. Watch him come into the picture. There you see him go through the block. Comes around the outside. Vince Thompson was trying to block him, didn't stay with him. Went around, around the outside, the backside of the quarterback, and made the, made the sack. Third down and 19. Second sack against the Lions today. Out of the shotgun. Remember the bad snap earlier. Blitz again. Well, that's a shame as Sims or Jones couldn't keep his balance. And he came up short of the first down by about three yards. James Jones, a rookie from Florida. He's had some bad ribs but he's been playing today Reggie Williams brought him down and he came into the game with 40 catches which is very unusual for a young back 
they coming tell out us of college. He's very aware of, of where the defense is. Yeah, they like him very, very much. Simmons is back to get the punt from Black, Mike Black. Simmons took it on the 25. Knocked down near the 30-yard line. Now the Bengals have got a field goal the last time they had the ball. Get it once more. If you're ready for high-performance photography, the Minolta X700 program system is ready for you. Computerized, motorized, systematized. Total capability, from fully programmed where you said nothing, even with flash, to creative manual where you control everything. The high-performance Minolta X700, voted camera of the year on two continents. Only from the mind of Minolta. When you're looking for quality products at extra special prices, look no further than True Value Hardware Store's Tool Value of the Month. In December, it's a Master Mechanic 19-inch hip roof toolbox, just $9.99. It features heavy steel construction and a removable tote tray. And the hip roof design allows added space for large tools. Get your Master Mechanic toolbox for only $9.99. Look for the December Tool Value of the Month banner at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. Well, we're happy to see the number 14 there. Kenny Anderson is well walking around. He could play if need be, but Shorter is the quarterback from his own 30. Stanley Wilson. You got about four or five. The thing about the Bengals when they get ahead of you and they lead now 17 to 6 with a good ground game with Johnson and in this case Wilson, they can keep the ball away from you. Yeah, they just move the chains. They just worry about making first downs and uh, they keep the ball away from you. Keep your offense, the opposition, opposing team's offense on the sideline and uh, boy, they're hard to get the ball back from. Second down and six at the 34. Isaac Curtis comes to the left. He hasn't done much today. and not thrown the ball to him. Kreider placing him, playing in place of Collins. Was this to the right? Johnson. And people just bounce off him. There goes the flag. As Johnson is tackled for a loss by Jimmy Williams. You got to get him low, don't you, Henry? Yeah, you got to get him low. You got to tackle him below the knees. He's so strong upstairs. And he's so big around the middle, you can't get your arms around him. Here's a penalty against Cincinnati. Mike Brown made a cute remark. I said, what about Johnson? He said, well, he used to be our horse. Now he's two horses. <laughs> That's the <laughs> Weighing son. 270. <laughs> That's the son of Paul Brown, the general manager. Yeah, he said, now he's two horses. Jim Tunney is telling him, if you turn the uh, penalty down, it will be third down and long, third and ten. Well, he can use to the hands. Number 62, decline. Third down. Okay, it's third down now. Third down and... See if the Lions can make something happen on this big play. Maurice Harvey checks in defensively. Four-man rush. Incomplete. Boy, that was good timing. That was good timing. Kreider covered by Hall, and he was lucky that he didn't get a play. He really was, but the anticipation of the flight of the ball was excellent on the part of Alvin Hall. He really made a super play. Eight and a half left in the third quarter. Watch Cobb. Watch Cobb give, give the official a little shot. Oh, <laughs> He says, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, didn't see him. He was in the way. He nailed the umpire, Jim Linebach. Those umpires take a beating during the course of the year. Pat McAnally punting. Martin took it at the 28. Where they nailed it. Good coverage. And John Simmons, number 25, got downfield to make the tackle after that 42 yard punt at the 28. 
When you run a small business, problems can leave you groping in the dark. You couldn't sleep either, huh? Unless you have a reliable guide like the Texas Instruments Professional Computer. It's easy to use keyboard, sharp, clear graphics, and hundreds of software programs will give you fast, reliable solutions today and tomorrow. Mike, I've got it. The Texas Instruments Professional Computer for reliable solutions today and tomorrow. I'd sure like another Strohs. Oh, wait. Alex? Two cold Strohs. <laughs> Where do you see this? Just open the refrigerator. Just open one bottle. Just open the other. Now he's pouring yours. Now he's pouring mine. Alex, you better be drinking your water. <laughs> <laughs> From one beer lover to another Strohs. Next Sunday, regional action featuring an important Western Division showdown between the Los Angeles Rams and the New Orleans Saints, plus other games, all starting with the NFL Today on CBS Sports. Well, there's the story here. 8.17 left in the third quarter. And the Lions have to get perky. Here's the reverse, a fake reverse, and Sims keeps the ball. And he... Well, he did get a first down. First down run by Billy Sims on the fake reverse. The Lions use that reverse frequently. It worked very well. He fakes it. Watch. They pitch the ball to Billy Sims going to his left. He fakes the ball to the receiver going around the right side. And really had he given the ball to the receiver, he had a lot of running room, although Billy did a good job of running and made the first down. But uh, that keeps the defense honest. The ball is at the Lion 38-yard line. 17 to 6, the Bengals lead. Thompson in the backfield with Sims. Williams, the linebacker, forced it, and Thompson got very little. Reggie Williams was there, number 57. There are scores of other games for you to digest. New Orleans by 7 in the fourth quarter. The Eagles have come back a bit. San Francisco by 10 over Buffalo there in the third quarter. Seattle comfortable 17 to 9 in the third quarter over the Giants and Cleveland having trailed throughout most of the game goes ahead by three in the third quarter. And Stram mentioned to me he thought Houston could knock him off today. Well that's a great comeback on the part of Cleveland though. Second down and nine this is Danielson. And the pass was thrown behind the intended receiver. You know, one thing on this kind of terrain, look at all the puddles on the right side of the 50-yard line to our right. You have to make sure that you stay away from those areas because it's so slippery and so slick. If you try to make a turn in that area, you're out of business. There's a good shot of it, and that's where they just tried to run the pattern that time, and he put his foot in the puddle and slipped. you got to be aware of where those puddles are and throw the ball to Corbin. Third down and nine. Nichols couldn't catch that last one. Six defensive backs. The blitz is on. The ball is aired out and incomplete. They were hoping that Scott could run underneath it, but he couldn't. And Detroit will have to punt, and Danielson is just like Hipple today. Can't get hot. Yeah, it's funny how that works. You know, you go along, and, and you can't uh, hit the side of a building. But again, I don't think that the good quarterbacks or the good running backs are going to be stopped consistently for four quarters. Somewhere along the line, they're going to get hot and start to make things happen. At least that's what usually happens. Mike Black will punt to John Simmons, who is at his 20. 7.22 left in the third quarter. A line drive kick. Simmons took it on the 20-yard line. Lots of lines there. Well, Lions can't get on track, and the Bengals have the ball again. Raise your hand. You got it. Raise your hand. You know it. You feel confident and secure. Raise your hand. You feel dry now. Raise your hand. You know why now. Raise your hand if you're sure. You've got it. That sure, secure, confident feeling. Because each sure gives you enough protection to help feel dry all day. Confidence, confidence, dry and Raise your hand, raise your hand, if you're sure. 
Who puts the oo in shampoo? Brel does, that's who. Yeah, Brel puts the oo in shampoo. Rich Formula Prel gives you special silkeners you can actually feel while you shampoo. And hair that feels rich and thick and terrific after. Ooh. Prel puts the oo in shampoo. Ooh. Puts it in a special formula for dry hair, too. Yeah, Brown puts the U in shampoo. Wednesday, meet an advertising man who's fed up with his job, his family, and his wife. Dick Van Dyke is a dropout father Wednesday. May I have your credit cards? Stram and Jack Buck with you. 7-10 left in the third quarter. It started to rain a little more heavily. Bengals have the ball at their 21-yard line, and there's the score, 17-6. I mentioned this earlier, but Detroit, to get back in this game, they have to do something with their specialty teams and also their defense to make something happen and reduce the size of the field so they can get back in this game. A keeper by Schoenert. Tight end, Van Ross, is out to the 40-yard line. Well, Shornett could have run or passed. That's how wide open that was. Well, you know, the success of that play was based on the fact that the weak side of the formation sold out. It made it watch the left side, the left guard and the left tackle. Look at there. They go like they're going to the right side. The defensive people react to that, and as a result, he gets outside of containment. Ross is wide open because everybody was going the other way. Really an excellent call by the coaches on the sideline. And a good job by Coper as Mike chased him down after somewhat holding his ground. The ball at the 40. Stanley Wilson got fired. That's the thing about the Bengals, as we told you a while ago. They can hang on to the ball for good periods of time. Alvin Hall, the tackler, number 35. And the Lions, the other thing they have to do, they have to try everything they possibly can to scrape the ball loose. Make you got to make something happen, get a fumble, do something. You just can't be satisfied to tackle a guy. You got to try to scrape the ball loose along with it. Five, five, five left in the third quarter. Second down and five. It all the time. And he bumps it. Incomplete. Third down. They had time, but nobody could shake loose. Well, they had an overshifted defense that time. Overshifted, meaning they moved a man over, one more man over to the left side of the formation. And uh, they had no rush whatsoever. He had all the time in the world to throw the ball and throw it into the dirt. He's four out of nine now, as you see, after taking over for Ken Anderson. Third and five. have to show for their day's work is six points. Third down and five for Cincinnati. There's a blitz. That's McNorton's seventh of the year. That's what you're talking about, Hank. They get the ball at their 42-yard line. Yeah, that's what, that's what they have to do, the way they're playing. And actually what happens in this kind of a game, Jack, you have to win two out of the three battles to win the war. If you win your, with especially teams, or the team, it doesn't mean you're as long as you win two out of three. You usually win. Good pressure that time. He tried to anticipate the inside move. That was one of those I, I thought patterns, Jack. He thought he was going to go inside, but he went outside and threw the interception. I like it. If you really like it, I really like it. We can help you get it. We're GMAC. We want it. We're GMAC Financing. GMAC has helped more people buy their new GM car truck than anyone with rates that make sense on models people want. All at your GM dealer. If you really want it, we can help you get it. We're GMAC Financing. Last year, we asked our competition to pick the best personal computer based on price and memory. They all chose the Commodore 64. With all the changes in the computer industry, we thought we'd better check again. The new IBM personal computer chose the Commodore 64. The new Apple IIe chose the Commodore 64. The more things change, the more things stay the same. Commodore, in more homes than any other home computer.